Hello, and welcome to Markets in Focus. My name is Joe Bell, and today I'm going to walk you through some of the most interesting financial market themes that I'm observing. So big week, Thanksgiving week, a little bit of quiet day for the markets in terms of a quiet week, rather. But we still got some exciting themes, a lot of things going on in November. It's been anything but quiet. Obviously, the big print of inflation CPI lower than expected. But if we look out, Americans' expectations is actually a little higher at 4.5% over the next year for inflation. Number two, I talked about November been anything but quiet, a big rally from both stocks and bonds as interest rates move back lower. That is historically unique, that correlation between stocks and bonds. And finally, looking ahead to next year, if Joe Biden runs again, we'll have a presidential re-election year. Since 1952, it's actually been a pretty good thing for the stock market when we have re-elections. So on the chart here, we have the University of Michigan Inflation Expectations, a survey of consumers. One of the questions around what do Americans expect inflation to be over the next 12 months? It ticked up higher, 4.5% year over year expectations from Americans. That's a tick higher than 4.4% earlier this month. That's according to the University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Poll. Uh, I'll withhold my comments about that, that state up north with the Ohio State and Michigan game coming up soon, but they do put out good consumer data. And I think it's important to look out in terms of consumer expectations. The Fed's gonna be keeping an eye on this in terms of not wanting to cut rates too soon and call the victory over inflation only to have inflation pick back up. That's historically what's happened, especially back in the 1970s, Fed trying everything they can to avoid that and be patient here. Now, November has been extremely strong for stocks. S&P 500 through the 17th, November 17th, last Friday, big rally, pretty flat week this week, but through Friday, you had the S&P 500 up nearly 8%. U.S. Bloomberg Aggregate Index, right? The basically the broad investment grade universe index and treasuries. You've got bond market up 3.4%. So stocks and bonds both up big. On this chart here, we have, it can be a little bit complicated, but we've got a scatter plot here that's two things. Number one, on the bottom, we have the one week S&P 500 return. That's between November 17th and November 10th, right? That was a bulk of the gains so far in November. That is the risk for the return divided by risk, and we compare on the left, the one week US 10 year bond return, right? The amount of risk we saw on bonds. So stock return versus change in bond volatility. Look at that, big spike up in both stocks and bonds. That's one of the largest over the past 20 years that we've seen that strong correlation between stocks and bonds. Typically you don't see that. And I believe when you see inflation, once we see if and when that inflation does come back down, we're going to see a return to normalcy in terms of the risk and the changes in the S&P 500 compared to the changes in bond prices for the uh, overall treasury market. Uh, those correlations historically have been close to zero. We could even see bonds return as a safe haven uh, once we return to a bit of normalcy. And finally, uh, a bit of positive potential news as we look out into 2024. These are the returns of the S&P 500 during presidential election years since 1952. So you can see most of them are positive. We've seen a couple that are negative. Uh, but number one, they're typically pretty positive. And number two, during presidential re-election years, we actually have never had the S&P 500 have a negative return. You can see those three periods were both, I'm sorry, all three were open elections, right? No presidential candidates were running for re-election. Uh, again, if Joe Biden runs next year, we could have um, a, another potential re-election year for the presidential candidacy. And historically, that's been actually pretty good. The theory behind this is that, hey, when presidents are running for re-election, they do hold some power, obviously, to sway policy and things like that. They're going to do everything they can to enact potential positive economic policy that may increase the odds of a re-election. And historically, that has been pretty well for the stock market overall. So we have the first 
Thanks for watching Fun Story. That includes two pictures in the history of Markets in Focus. I believe that's the case. Uh, feel free for someone to fact check me if they want to go back through, but I think that's the case. And I think it's a deserving one. Uh, Mr. Sam Altman, former CEO of OpenEye, famously the creator of ChatGBT. Uh, big week, big week. All right. He was fired by OpenAI as CEO. Three days later, Microsoft said, come on board. We'll hire you. Head up our new AI division, right? There's been a close partnership between OpenAI and in Microsoft for years. So got high, fired, had a, an opportunity to be hired by Microsoft. And just a few days after that, in less than a week, OpenAI ousted some of the board members, said, hey, Altman, come back. We need you, right? Tough week, but good week from Sam Altman before we head into the Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, tough week for the turkey, but overall a great week for a lot of holiday goers. We had Thanksgiving yesterday, Black Friday today. I know a lot of people taking off work today. So if you're watching this, enjoy the holiday weekend with family. I hope you didn't eat too much on Thanksgiving, but if you are rest up, um, try to contain perhaps too much shopping around there. I know a lot more online shopping, but enjoy the time with family. I want to thank everyone for watching, not only today, but throughout the years, and obviously the support for meter investment management from the entire company out to anybody viewing this. Have a great weekend. Thanks again for the support, and I'll see you next time.